Welcome everyone to our webinar series. My name is Graham Hutchinson with Nelson Irrigation. Thanks for joining us today. I'd like to introduce our team, uh, Mike Noftal, Independent Consultant, Washington State, Steve McCoon, Nelson Irrigation in Walla Walla, Washington, Joe Vivier, the Global Support Person with Irrigate in New Zealand, and Ignacio Del Campo, our Nelson Irrigation Guy in Chile. Here we are on our schedule, and today's uh, webinar is Database Assembly. Steve McCoon is going to present the Database Assembly webinar today. Uh, please ask questions using the Q&A feature of Zoom, and our team will answer them. Para los asistentes de habla español, se puede hacer preguntas por el menú Preguntas y Repuestos. Trataremos de contestarles en español. So now I will... Uh, hand over to uh, Steve McCoon. Great, thank you very much, Graham. And I will share my screen and uh, we can get started on the uh, PowerPoint show. Um, okay, so what we're continuing on with this section, this will be the third in the series of uh, databases. And uh, I'd like to, really make sure that we wrap up this very important part of the IRCAD database function is in the creation of assemblies. So assemblies can have a lot of different parts that would make up one unit. So you could have a filter, let's say, um, that would have every little part or a big gun riser with all the different fittings. You would place it one time and all the fittings would appear in order and then show up on your materials list. Uh, this is used for inlets to filters or center pivot uh, installations, uh, flow meters. You, uh, you can create assemblies around many things. And we're gonna look today in a new feature uh, that we've got in the ability to put in uh, partial units and create a riser assemblies like what we see here. So where we've got a situation, you might need a dual line drip down a blueberry field or in a orchard or something, but you really want just one riser there. Uh, Grandma's going to uh, give us a presentation in a moment on how to create that. So um, with that, uh, I would just introduce a lot of the different videos. We're gonna be watching one today. Uh, a lot of the different videos that you'll have a chance to look at can be found on iricad.com under um, support and videos. And I'm gonna just grab this one here and we'll uh, watch this presentation. This video demonstrates how to configure iricad to produce the correct bill of materials for designs with single risers for dual laterals. IRICAD resolves each junction as shown by the red dots. The solution we want is shown by the blue dots. If we look at the components of each riser junction, there is a riser pipe, a fitting on the submain, and a fitting on the lateral. For the riser, we can configure the pipe type and the submain depth. For the fittings, if we treat these as assemblies, we have the opportunity for greater customization. We can have multiple items in the assembly and we can have fractional quantities. Although in Ericad's mind it is resolving the junctions as in the image to the left, we can configure the assemblies to represent the image to the right. Ericad will still resolve each individual lateral to submain junction. The key is to have fractional quantities in the assembly in order to have the correct bill of materials. For example, if we have 0.5 submain tees and 0.5 riser tees in the assembly, the result will be one of each for every dual lateral set. The riser pipe quantity will be double what is required. I'll discuss how to resolve this later in the video. It is very helpful to have a unique pipe type for the riser pipe. This prevents unintended use elsewhere in a project 
and allows for more customization. Here are some examples. RVN could be riser PVC non-regulated. RVR, riser PVC regulated. RPN, riser polyethylene non-regulated. RPR, riser polyethylene regulated. Utilizing user-specified riser pipes in each design allows you to control which assemblies IRICAD selects. In this way, you don't have to turn assemblies on or off in the database for different types of designs. Naturally, the more riser pipe options you have, the more assemblies you will need to build in the database. For this video, I have made a new pipe type in the pipe fitting matching table. The type is RPN, riser, poly, non-regulated. The pipe is female, fittings will be male. Rounding is set to 1. We want to see the true quantity in the bill of materials, not a length rounded to 20 feet or 100 feet. You may have pre-cut riser pipes that are 2 feet long and sold per unit. If you set the submain depth to 1, the total length in the bill of materials will be the number of units. Let's look at an example where the submain is PVC, the laterals are 5 8 drip tape, and the riser pipe and horizontal pipe are 3 quarter inch poly. There are many fitting options. These are the ones used in this example. This is the assembly in the database for the T at the top of the riser pipe. The drip tape has a pipe type of LDP and is female, so fittings need to be LDP and male. The quantities are half those required. Remember, IRICAD is going to pick this T for every lateral. For a dual lateral set, the quantity will be correct. This is the assembly in the database for the T at the bottom of the riser pipe. An assembly will be required for each pipe diameter used in the submain. If LTO lateral takeoffs are used, only one assembly will be required. We also need to create a pipe for the riser pipe in the database. This is in the pipe section of the database. Notice that this pipe is not flagged for use as a lateral zone pipe or mainline pipe. In this way it won't be selected. Uh, as one of the diameters in the design. Also, it has the pipe type of RPN. This pipe is in the database solely for the purpose of being used as a riser pipe. Let's test the assemblies on a simple design. Here we have a block of 20 drip tape laterals in 10 sets of dual drip lines. We can see that the submain is 2 inch PVC and the depth is set to 1 foot. We're going to specify the riser selection rules. Between 0 and 1 feet, we're going to use the user option and select the 3 quarter poly RNV riser pipe that we've created in the database. Now we run the computer selection of fittings. And we're just going to look at the fittings in the riser junctions. So we're just going to select that area and view the bill of materials. For a selected area, we need to give it a, a name. And we can see that there are 10 2 inch by 3 quarter T's. At the top of the riser, there are 10 3 quarter inch T's. And there are the associated fittings uh, for those T's. There are 20 uh, 5 8 tape lock T's and associated fittings to convert to the polyethylene. Note that there are 20 riser pipes. There are 10 risers and there are 20 pipes. We could uh, accept that part of these pipes is going to be used for the horizontal section 
or if we want to, we can put a negative quantity in the miscellaneous costs. To do that, we go to miscellaneous costs. We'll add that item and put in a quantity of minus 10. When we look at the bill of material reports again, we can see that there are now 10 units or 10 feet of the riser pipe. A few final thoughts. Please be aware that the friction loss in these assemblies can be very high, particularly if small ball valves or pressure regulators are used in the assemblies. URICAD has no knowledge of the hydraulic characteristics of items inside assemblies, and so the friction loss is not taken into account. Great, thank you very much for that video, Graham, that's a, a really great presentation that we can see on uh, ericad.com under uh, support and videos. So uh, what we'll look now is when we're wanting to use something that Graham touched on in the video was about how to get pre-cut length uh, risers chosen and to get them uh, chosen correctly so you don't end up with too many of them. And if we look back at our pipe fitting matching table in ERICAD, we would want to set that up this way where, where we've got, you know, rounding to one foot and we put in roll length at three feet for a, let's say a three foot pre-cut riser, but then we want to set our depth at one foot and that's so that we get uh, our rounding and our cut length to match. And then you can set this, you would still use it at one foot deep, but you could have your pre-cut risers be at uh, three feet, two feet, four feet, or whatever they are. So, so that's uh, again, done back in ERICAD in your pipe fitting matching table. Another thing to think about when we're doing assemblies is remembering that with any of these items that we want selected in ERICAD, uh, for a fitting standpoint and riser, uh, whether they're riser fittings or assemblies, they all need to be looking correct from their nominal diameter. The nominal diameter is the diameter that's used in conjunction with the pipe type to make sure that you're getting the fitting selection correctly. And so, uh, so that's an important thing to remember. And then there's little cool things that we can do uh, with the ERICAD database editor and the way that we set up assemblies that will allow you to create a pipe type in your pipe fitting matching table and then choose how you use that to whether you choose a T or a saddle. So in this example, in the slide here, you can see that I've got a, a PVC T here, that's PVC mail slip by PVC mail slip by PVC mail slip. So you can know that if you have your correct diameters here, you would choose a T in that spot. If you were using an RIS riser type, like we looked at in our um, other example uh, that I showed you a, a slide or so ago, or in this example here, uh, we would have a PVC mail slip by PVC mail slip by RIS mail slip. And then whenever you use that uh, riser tubing, it will only be choosing saddles versus if you use a PVC pipe there uh, or a, even a PVC tubing, uh, you will be using a T. So we can do things like this that would really be helpful. And that's how you would get to your assemblies to land with T's or saddles. So now I wanna look at uh, is how do we create a uh, uh, an assembly that would be correct one time and fit any pipe size that it would go into. And that's gonna be where we've gonna build our assembly from a certain point. In the uh, assembly example that Graham did in his video, we had to have one assembly for every different pipe size. And that's because there were half units used in the assembly. 
in this assembly that we're going to build now for an air vent, we're going to build it so that it will work with one uh, one assembly, but we're going to have a male uh, pipe uh, presented to the um, other pipes, and then they will always be able to it'll just choose a T, a reducing T if needed, and it will always look the same. So how we do that is we just create an assembly with all the materials except the bottom T. We don't include that. And it's going to look as simple as a PVC male pipe. So I'm going to stop the sharing there. I'm going to grab uh, sharing of our uh, database. Uh, make sure that I've got uh, that uh, program done there. and. Um, hopefully you can see my uh, database editor now. And uh, so what I'm going to do is with this type of a thing, because we're going to choose for air vents, we're going to create an assembly in other hydraulics. And the reason that we do that is because there's not a significant hydraulic consequence to an air vent when it's there and doing its job, but we do need it to show up on the parts list and we need it to also have a symbol so it can be uh, located on the design so that it can also be located on the on the legend. So we're going to, out of all these different tabs, uh, we're going to choose other hydraulics. So uh, you may not be able to see my cursor, but I've selected the other hydraulics tab. And then over a little bit farther in, uh, you can see that I've highlighted a gear that says new assembly, and I'm going to create a new assembly. So we're going to be able to name this here. Now remember, we can only add things into an assembly that already exists in our database. So even if you have it under miscellaneous or it's a fitting, all those things must exist. But once they exist, then we can include them in our database. So I'm going to um, create this uh, Nelson two inch uh, air vent assembly. Okay. and. Uh, there's usage codes, options that we've got here. Uh, uh, blank or no are the same thing. A Y usage code means that we would be able to access it from within ERICAD, uh, and all the parts will be listed separately. An A will list them only as an assembly. An X will list them as an assembly, and then break those assemblies out at the bottom. But we want to use Y, which would be common. And we don't actually need a usage code, uh, or excuse me, a, a warehouse code in an assembly because all of the parts that are building up the aspects of that, of the different parts included in the assembly will have you uh, warehouse codes. So what do we want this assembly to look like? So we want the assembly to look like a, um, it's, it's gonna have a PVC. Uh, it's gonna look like a male PVC pipe. So we'll choose male and a slip. Okay, and there's not going to be any outlet connection to it at all. Our inlet diameter that's going to be that's PVC male slip is two inch. There is no outlet diameter to it at all. And of course, there's uh, not any uh, uh, friction loss, uh, head loss constants, indexes, or any of that stuff with, uh, with an air vent. Uh, we'll put a, a very small uh, flow rate of nothing up to 2,000 gallons per minute where we might use this. Of course, we can choose any of the different, um, let's see, I'm going to choose a uh, symbol here, a plotting symbol of a diagonal square and maybe make it a little bit larger. And then we'll hit continue. And now we can start selecting. You see here in red, we're creating the assembly, two inch PV, uh, uh, you know, uh, air vent assembly. And I'm going to choose this air vent by clicking on the little uh, box next to it. And it asks me how many air vents do I need in this assembly? And I need just, I just need one. So I click OK. And now we're going to go over to find other items that we're going to put in this assembly. And I'll click on couplers because I'll need a two inch female adapter to be able to attach the air vent to, to thread that into onto the end of a PVC pipe. And we'll just need one of those. I'll go into elbows and bends. I'm going to go down and find my two inch 90 degree slip elbows. They're here. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to need two of those in the example that, that we're doing here. And then I've uh, got that set. Now, um, 
we're going to need some uh, pipe, of course. So I'm going to find two inch pipe. Of course, with uh, these, we can uh, sorts of different ways, but I'm going to go down and find, I've got some class 100 inch pipe there. And let's say we're going to put in 10 feet of pipe into our assembly. Down below us uh, in the lower part of your screen, you'll be seeing that the items included in the assembly are included and their unit numbers or length. Once you're uh, satisfied with that, then we can click on our last gear over here where we can finish our assembly. And once we've done that, you'll see the Nelson uh, air vent assembly is included here in our list of products. So now that we've created it, I'm gonna stop the uh, screen share. I'm gonna, for the databases, I'm gonna uh, share my ERCAD screen and uh, we're gonna go and test out our, our uh, air vent assembly. Okay. Okay, so now I've got my uh, ERCAD screen open and I'm gonna grab a bit of main line and I'm gonna choose a three inch piece of main line and I'm gonna just draw this across the screen. I'm gonna have my um, uh, depth set at zero, which is fine in this example. And I'll set a junction in the middle of that. And the reason I did that, and this is helpful when you're proving out databases and testing things, is you do them in small sizes. So I'm gonna change this one to four inch. So now I've got a three inch piece of pipe and a four inch piece of pipe. So I'm gonna now go up to mainline and miscellaneous hydraulic. I'm gonna go down and find that two inch Nelson air vent assembly that we just created, leave that at a depth of zero, which is where my pipe is. And I'm gonna place it on the three inch pipe and I'll place it again on the four inch pipe. Okay, so now uh, we've got the air vent, the same air vent assembly placed in two spots. So I'm gonna go up to uh, uh, design and computer selection of fittings. And then I'm gonna zoom in on this one. I'm gonna select it, right click, and we'll go down, uh, excuse me, uh, double click and go to fittings. And you can see that it's our two inch air vent assembly and a three by two inch T, exactly what we wanted to have happen. So I'm gonna zoom out and zoom over on this one and we'll double click it and uh, check it. And we've got our two inch air vent and a four by two inch T. So uh, all of that is working, we'll, we'll hide those. Um, and then we can look and see in, I'll go to reports and look at the, uh, look in our bill of materials reports. And you can see in this example, now we've got a, uh, we had 10 foot of pipe dedicated to each of our air vent assemblies. And here's our 20 feet of two inch pipe. We've got some of the pipe that we put in because uh, we drew it a certain amount of lengths in three and four inch. We've got our two air vents and the male adapters, some caps for the end of the pipe. Um, and how ERICAD chose to go from four inch down to three inch is it used a four inch coupling and a four by three inch bush to get you down to the uh, three inch pipe. And then here is four of our elbows and our separate tees. So, ERCAD did a really good job of calculating out all the different parts that we needed. We used the Y usage code and our assembly worked exactly as planned. So um, I hope that's been helpful in showing uh, and discussing how to use our uh, assemblies in the ERCAD databases. So uh, if there's any questions, uh, feel, feel, feel free to continue to ask those and uh, not saying any, uh, back to you, Graham. Thank you very much, Steve, appreciate that. And our next webinar is coming up in a couple of days time uh, on Tuesday, the February the 2nd, and we'll go over uh, database maintenance. 
look at some queries and some very, very efficient ways to update your database and update pricing. So thanks for attending today and we'll see you in a couple of days time or next Tuesday.